Hey guys, and welcome to another little video. Today we're going to be having a look at the Lego Urukai attack set from obviously Lego Lord of the Rings, which can be purchased here. Uh, if the little bar has popped up here, something will pop up, which you can get from Big Bad Toy Store. If not, the little thing here, there are going to be links below this video or wherever the comment box may happen to be, which you can click on and go directly to this item's little thing there. So, why not go and click it, check it out, and uh, do the good deed for Andy, because uh, the monsters in the back of my head will eat me otherwise. Horrible, horrible things, nightmarish things, but good times as well. And speaking of good times, um, yeah, we'll have a look at this very nice little upgrade and army builder set for LEGO Lord of the Rings. So here's what you get with the Urukai attack set. You get four Urukais and a siege weapon. You get a part of Helm's Deep's War, a Rohirrim soldier, and Eomir, if that's how you pronounce his name. But since I mentioned him, let's take a closer look at the little minifigs. So let's start off with the Urukai, which I have talked about before in my Helm's Deep video. He does still have the nice shield here, with the nice pointy bits at the bottom. He does have his chopper, or a scimitar if you like. And uh, the nice Urukai helmet, which is the standard helmet for all Urukai in Sauron's army, or Saruman's, whatever. He again has the nice face printing on front, and another one on the back, without the white hand. He has a nice back print and front print as well, and his pants have a lovely little pattern on them as well, because Urukai pants are top-notch in the army. The only difference between this and the other ones are armor pieces, of course, and with this one, he has a hair piece, because again... In Sauron's army, style is everything, so let's pop that bit of hair off. And it's, you know, it's just like a hat or anything else. It just pops onto anybody, and they can be as stylish as their friends. Uh, so yeah, that's the Urukai. The next one up is the Rohirrim soldier here, which is pretty cool. And the only way you can get this minifig, unfortunately, he comes with a short bow. Uh, he comes with a sword. Long sword, maybe? It's a sword. Uh, and he's got this nice uh, Rohirrim helmet here, which has no printing, it's just solid grey, which is nice and different from the other one, which I'll show you in a bit, but we'll pop that off. And we see this guy has a lovely ginger beard. He's all beardy, uh, and a little bit gruff, and on the back here, he's angry with his big ginger beard. And we have a quiver here with some arrows in, so we'll pop that off, and obviously it's just a, like anything else, like a cave, you pop that off. Nice front printing on the front, no printing on the pants though, unfortunately. Uh, and some nice bits on the back. Clearly, the Rohirrim army doesn't care quite as much about style as uh, Saruman does. So there's something. But they do have some nice hats. Let's... There we go. Uh, they have some lovely horsey hats, which is always good. And look at Eomir, uh, if that's how you say his name. He has the same shield as uh, the king. So we'll take that away, because there's no difference there. He has a spear. Uh, which has the soft plastic at the top, so kids don't put their eyes out. But obviously, it's a little bit bendy, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, it's a pretty good spear, I'd say. I remember back in the day when we had the other spears. Uh, we'll take a look at his helmet. As I mentioned, the normal Rohirrim helmet was just grey here. So it's nice to see that up the chain of command, they have a, it's the same helmet, but there's a lot more detail that goes into it. And, of course, he's a very angry man, or he's a very stern man. Uh, Lego man, of course, not a real man. Underneath his nice green cape here, we have some back printing and a little pouch there on his back for some, I don't know, money or sweets. Uh, nice front printing, and he gets printing on his trousers. Poor Rohirrim soldier. No fancy pants for you, my friend. Only uh, a little bone quiver. That's really all the minifigs. Well, apart from this last one, because, you know, a horse is a horse, of course. Uh, that's a rhyme, you see. Uh, he has this nice saddle, of course, and you can put in a little brick there to fill out the horse if you don't want him to have the seat. He does have the uh, the joint there and the joint in his head, so he can rear up and kick some Urukai in the face if he chooses to, the pegs in the bottom of his feet. Uh, and a nice tail as well. And that's really all that this horse can do, apart from prancy around. And we'll move on to the siege weapon here, which is all bitty and looks gnarled and stuff with these big cool wheels, which is what you want from a big siege weapon, for if they don't have wheels, they can't roll. This rolls fairly successfully, I would say. It doesn't rotate, which is a bit of a shame, just because of that part. Something, it would be nice if it could pivot up and down, but these parts move, which is quite nice. You can give the illusion that, I don't know, when it's fired forward, maybe these bits go forward. Uh, you know, or maybe when you want it nice and taut, you can pull them all the way back. I don't know, I've never used a siege weapon before. 
Uh, but this big red part here is obviously your firing device. And these usually don't go too far, so let's give it a try. Oh. Well, yeah, it, it, it surprisingly worked. These rarely ever work for me until now, which is handy for it's a video review. Uh, and these hooks are quite cool. And they, you know, hook onto the wall and pull the wall down or stuff up. Uh, y you know, they do the usual siege work stuff, and they are just a flick missile, but with something else to flick it rather than your finger, which is always much more effective than using your finger to flick stuff. Uh, they look quite nice in there. It'd be nicer, potentially, if they were a bit further apart, but we'll do it again, see if it fails. No! It's fairly successful today. Oh, uh, I say that and a bit comes off. What are you going to do? As I mentioned, maybe when it releases, it's like that. Uh, so it looks like it's fired. I don't know! Uh, but I do like these parts have came back again to give it that kind of Urukai pointy look. I mean, they've got no reason for them, but, you know, it's still nice for them to be there. And something else that's nice about it is you do have these random little wooden pieces all over it as well. Uh, only three, but it adds that nice kind of wooden texture to it to really make it feel kind of old school, which I like. So next we have the wall here, or something that you'd add on to the extension of Helm's Deep. And it looks like part of that wall. Here are the pegs that you'd use to, you know, peg it into the wall. Around the back we have some stairs, and really that's about it. We do have a little catapult, which I would fire better, but you'll lose these things quickly, especially on my grey carpet. Uh, I did have an extra fire piece, so I decided to make a fire rock. Uh, the dreaded fire rocks of Middle Earth. So maybe you launch it, and it sets some dudes on fire! Uh, I, cause, you know, I hate to be on fire, and I hate to be hit by rocks, they're my only weaknesses, uh, out of many other weaknesses. Uh, it does have a, an extra flag, and that's really about it, you can't do a huge amount with the wall, but it is a nice bit of scenery to put your dudes around and have them fight. Uh, for the wall, or against the wall, or however you like your walls. It does have, of course, the nice bits of green here and there everywhere, as we would come to expect from these parts on Helm's Deep as well. And its overall look is is successful. It merges into Helm's Deep successfully, which is what you wanted. And to prove this statement, I will get part of Helm's Deep and make it easier to show you. So here's really the optimum place that you'd connect it. Uh, you'd simply get the pegs and ports, line them up, and boom, there you go. That's the extension. Obviously, you fiddle around with uh, these parts of the wall to just make it look a bit neater. Maybe you'd, I don't know, do that so it's a bit more secure. It's Lego. You can do what you like, but it looks nice. It looks fairly successful, and it connects in sturdily. Sturdily? That doesn't sound right, but we'll run with it anyway. This set, uh, I find, is really for those people who want to army build an Urukai army. Since you do get the four minifigs, it's perfect for just building that massive mighty army that you need to assault Helm's Deep. It was nothing bad about Helm's Deep, but it did only come with four people to assault it. Um, it especially when you consider that it was like 10,000 strong. Four just doesn't really do it. Granted, neither does eight, but it certainly helps bolster out a play with the Helm's Deep set. I only have a couple of not huge issues with this, but maybe irks, I suppose. Uh, I do find it a shame that this is really the only way you can get the Rohirrin soldier, as this is, again, a guy that you need to have multiple characters of to really fill out the Helm's Deep itself, or uh, the battle at the end of uh, Return of the King, you know. So that's it for this week, people. Remember, you can buy the set from Big Bad Toy Store. There are links below in the description of the video and probably here on the video itself somewhere. So please go and check that out and tell them Andy sent you because I am a great and wise man and I know many things about the world that only men could dream of. Until next time, people, maybe then I'll share some more dreams with you. Maybe then the madness will get me. Who knows?